So one of the problems I keep running into with these thrust vector controlled rockets is the burn time. There's a limited catalog of motors and the better, longer burning motors are actually all high powered motors that you have to be certified to fly. The current motors I'm flying on are all classified as low power, which means you don't need any sort of certification to buy, but there's a limit to how high and fast you can go on them. So in this series, we're gonna be focusing on building a high power certification rocket that will also serve as a test bed for moving some of the electronics and avionics components that I've been developing forward further than I otherwise would be able to with just thrust vector controlled rockets. We'll be able to test all sorts of new equipment at much higher speeds, higher altitudes, and more intense environments. As it turns out, back in college, I actually did a certification rocket, but my paperwork was never actually handed in. My rocket's gonna be based on the Copenhagen Suborbitals Spica, because I like to keep things based in reality. Spica is a super ambitious project, if you haven't heard of it, and it's entirely crowdfunded and volunteer sourced. They're funded mostly by Patreon, which is super impressive, because they do so much with not a lot. One of the most important parts of a CERT rocket is the fins, so we're gonna make those right like that. Not really. So the process of building one of these is sometimes more or less intense. You can go with a kit, but I decided to make a custom rocket, which involves a lot of open rocket simulation and fiddling around in CAD. The design of the rocket, again, is based on Spica, but it also has to work in the physics environment that I'm putting it into too, so a lot of testing went into this. I did load testing based on the intended loads on the vehicle, and the thin wall tubes were able to perform great. After that, I took my open rocket fins and I was able to print them out onto printer paper and trace that onto my plywood. I'm using eighth inch plywood for my fins and my centering rings, which is really sturdy and is gonna do a great job at keeping the airframe light and strong. Each of the fins doesn't actually come out very uniform when you cut it out by hand. So I clamped them all together and used some high grit sandpaper to sand up the edges and get them to match closer. Having uniform fins is super important to keeping the rocket flying straight and preventing it from spinning or rolling during flight. Next up, we're gonna attach the aft motor retaining ring. This is a nice aluminum fixture I got from Apogee Components, as well as most of the other parts, and it retains the motor in the motor tube. Keeping the fins straight on the airframe is incredibly important to making the rocket fly straight, and by hand, this can be really hard to do. So going into software, we can build up a nice piece of tooling to build up the fins in and maintain them. Uh, this will keep them straight while they're gluing and make sure that the whole rocket is assembled as sturdily as possible. With the fins finished and beveled and ready to be test fit, we're able to start gluing together our components with epoxy. The airframe needs to be slotted to fit the fins, and then we're gonna use a fillet on the inside and the outside to make this joint really, really strong. The motor tube goes onto the jig and we're gonna be using Rocket Poxy from Apogee. This stuff is great. It smells awful. 
It is literally forbidden peanut butter. This stuff is so nasty. It's kind of awful to work with in the sense of it just doesn't do what you want it to, I feel like, a lot of the time. And it took me a while to master applying it and using it well. I went a little hard on the epoxy on these joints, but you can't see them inside the airframe and these have to be very, very strong. I was able to measure between the fins to confirm that everything's square and aligned. And I just let it sit for 24 hours at that point. You need a lot of patience during the build process for these rockets, just because it takes so long to work with the epoxy cure times. At this point, the airframe was ready to be mated together and the fins are inserted into the aft section of the airframe. I applied some epoxy on the inside there and on the coupler between the aft set of the airframe and the forward airframe. The coupler is as far forward as possible to move the center of mass as far forward as possible. And that allows me to have smaller fins on the rocket and be a little more to scale with the actual Spica. I then smoothed out the excess to try and fill the gap, and we're gonna come back and sand that down so it's nice and smooth later on. I took a couple clamps, and I was able to clamp the airframe to the fin can there, and that sat, once again, 24 hours. So now that everything's bonded together, we're gonna start adding fillets to the joints of the fins, which are really important for mechanical structure. And they make these fins really, really sturdy and aerodynamic. So it just builds up a little bit of a rounded edge in between each fin, and that process takes forever. And then now we're on to priming and paint. This is just a Rust-Oleum filler primer, so it helps fill all the holes on the airframe and lets us sand everything so that it ends up nice and smooth. At that point, I added a white base coat and then a silver coat on the bottom, which would be the liquid natural gas tank on Spica. I also was able to carve out a raceway out of balsa wood and that was adhered as well using the rock epoxy to the airframe. Removing the masking tape was incredibly satisfying for this part because the lines came out so clean from the metallic and I was really, really happy with the result at this point. These type rockets are really fun to make just because there's a little more freedom of expression in the paint scheme and you're really trying to be kind of a craftsman with it and get this nice smooth finish and this nice sturdy structure as opposed to the thrust vector controlled ones where we're more focused on software and it's a more functional design. This gets to be a little more aesthetic. Basing it again off of Spica, I made a bunch of decals to apply to the airframe and cut them out and adhered them using 3M spray. I also built a propellant feed line that goes down the side using a couple pieces of extra balsa and a piece of carbon fiber rod. And that's once again, rock epoxy to the side of the vehicle. This is again, purely aesthetic. It can only hurt the way it flies because it's an external protuberance, but I think it looks really cool. And I like the overall not smooth and protruding look of some of the real flight vehicles out there. 
On the forward airframe, we have a couple laser cut fins. I wish I had this ability when I started, but I gained it after the fact through a friend. And a similar process of rocket epoxy on the fins fillets them to the airframe. We also added a little bit of orange there on the capsule section of the rocket, which we will cover more in depth in another video. Where I'm at currently on Spica means the fins are all attached and the structural airframe is done, and it's pretty much time to move on to the electronics section. So in the next video, we're gonna be covering the avionics bay on this vehicle and some of the features that make it really unique, like its onboard camera and its telemetry testing system. I'm gonna actually be uploading all the files for building Spica onto my Patreon so that anyone who wants to build this project as well can. So if you wanna build along, you can. So I'll see you in the next one.